Hello and welcome everyone to the Main Street Matters webinar. My name is Patrick Kaiser. I'm the executive director of Heart on Main Street. Uh, since this is our largest webinar to date uh, in terms of registrants, some of you might not be familiar with Heart on Main Street. So uh, we are a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to helping the independent retail community, uh, providing tips and resources to help you all thrive within your local economies. We provide education for retailers through monthly webinars like this one that you are attending today. We also help connect retailers to different services and different companies uh, that they can reach out to to help improve their businesses like Windows Matter, uh, who you'll be hearing from later. Uh, but we also have a wide network of companies, uh, of, of different social media uh, companies, visual merchandising, financial planning, marketing, e-commerce development, real estate, legal aid, different things that as a retailer you might need, you can find at our website, heartonmainstreet.org. Uh, also, we, as a nonprofit, we do raise money for our organization. Um, donations can be made through heartonmainstreet.org. All donations, the money that we raise goes back to independent retailers. We have a large focus on helping indep uh, independent retailers and communities that have been impacted by natural disasters to help them get back on their feet, reopen their stores so they can continue serving their community. This is a monthly webinar series uh, for independent retailers dedicated to the independent retail community to provide pertinent information and tips on how to grow your business. So thank you so much for attending today. You can find upcoming webinars as well as previous webinars that we've done at our website, hardonmainstreet.org. My guest today is Amy Meadows, the founder of Windows Matter. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for joining today. Thrilled to be here. Thanks for the invite, Patrick. Oh, absolutely. I am thrilled that you are here. Um, as I mentioned, Amy is the founder of Windows Matter, which has helped retailers across the country and retail communities with window displays, visual merchandising, event planning. She also holds a, a consulting business boot camp for, for areas to help them uh, revitalize their, their businesses. She also serves as an adjunct professor at Columbia College in Chicago, and for 25 years was the head designer of the famous Marshall Fields windows in Chicago. Uh, Amy, when I looked at your portfolio, I mean, as a Chicago resident myself, I mean, I remember the the Grinch oh. windows. I remember oh Cinderella. I remember Alice in Wonderland and Harry Potter. Those are iconic, iconic window displays. And so, I mean, really, there is no one better to talk about the art of window displays than than you. So, again, I am thrilled that you are here. Thank you so much for for joining today. Well, I will tell you, no, now you will know how close the Grinch came to actually stealing Christmas. Oh no! <laughs> because three days before we were scheduled to open, the corner window caught fire. I remember that. And the good news was the sprinkler worked. And the bad news was the sprinkler worked. Oh, and geez. it soaked everything and the book department and the luggage stock room in the second basement. It was crazy. Oh. <laughs> so oh. there's always uh, there's always some always, kind of drama yeah. behind the design. And um, one of the things that I am, am here to share and also eager to get uh, questions and things from folks as we go along. One of my missions has been to take that, I mean, yes, grand and glorious, iconic work, right? From State Street and make it accessible, affordable, achievable for Main Street. That is, that's really... So to go from State Street to Main Street, to make it doable, it shouldn't have to be like, oh, if only, if, you know, if only I had this or that. It's like, I'm, I'm here to tell you. You do these things. We, <laughs> you can have that. Yeah. <laughs> you can have that. You can do that. And I'm going to take you a little bit behind the scenes. That really kind of my things. I will turn it over to you and talk about window displays, which is so big, especially at this time of the year. 
Q4 uh, going into to this part is, I mean, we need to get people in the door, need to have that to, to bring, uh, bring people in. And windows are a great way to do that. Dude, you read my script. All right, let me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to set you up. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me pull this up, please. And we'll get going. Okay, so can everyone see this? We can see, yeah. Yay! All right, so as you mentioned, it's fourth quarter. I don't know who did the math that decided that fourth quarter, those last two months, is when we would do, you would do 50% of your store business. I mean, hello, that, <laughs> that puts your storefronts and your displays under special scrutiny because those first impressions matter more than ever with any age <laughs> shopper. Now, um, at Fields, just to, for because I was there from 83 to 2008, so yeah, in the late 1900s, I guess. <laughs> um, and that just understand when we are thinking about quantity, man hours, all of this. If you haven't been to Chicago, the store takes up an entire city block. There are windows that wrap the first floor that are uh, all 10 feet tall by a minimum of 10, sometimes up to 13 feet wide. They're enormous. And then 10 floors of merchandise. So at any given time, the, the team members were covering a million square feet of, and with visual merchandising. And just to clarify visual merchandising, that is creating eye-catching sales driving displays. Displays looking pretty is one thing, but you gotta drive the sales or we aren't doing our job. Um, at the store, we, at Holiday, we took two separate but equally important approaches to the use of our real estate. The first along State Street, as Patrick mentioned, the iconic storybook windows, there was no merchandise in there. There was never any product. We weren't selling anything but our brand, our store. All we wanted to do was give you a lovely place to just gaze and relive traditions and you know all of that. Now, let's be clear. That, that idea of enticing and engaging that's great. And you can do that. You can do that. You can say, I don't want to sell stuff. I just, I just want them to want to be near our store or come in our store. That's fine. Reinforce your role in the community. But at some point you may say, nope, we got to sell stuff. <laughs> we've got, we've got to redouble our efforts, which on Washington Randolph and Wabash, we had to go hard to make sure that we had covered every possible, you can't possibly go without purchasing this, this hat, this, uh, these books, this cookware, this fur coat, this, you know, who are, and, and because we were a department store, we had a very wide range of customers. So that's, if you're going to make those, if you're going to make those, uh, make those fourth quarter goals, strategy is everything. And I'm going to ask that everyone just make a mental written note that there are three boxes you have to tick, right? The first one is cleanliness. Absolutely. I know you're going to wash your windows from the inside and the outside. I know you're sweeping the sidewalk and making sure that the, that the any kind of planters are updated. But let's also think about organizing and keeping things edited, organized, and focused. As Patrick posted a, a day or two ago, we're, we're like neck and neck with goldfish for the amount of, for the, 
<laughs> I think it's somewhere between Your eight, attention eight, spans. <laughs> eight point two five. I'm like, wow, okay, Nemo has me beat um, in terms of attention span. And it may be because it's cold out, or it may be because I'm tired, but hello, just please point me to what you want me to see. Draw me in and show me where you'd like for me to look. And that means you'll have to make some decisions, sometimes tough decisions, about what merchandise you're going to show. You want to show your best, your coolest, but not everything, because you still want them to come inside the store. So we need to be clean and focused. We need to think about consistency when it comes to your the architecture of your storefront, the vibe, the what is what is your how would your uh, customers describe you? Do you focus on nostalgia? Are you fun and whimsical? Are you super contemporary? Uh, are you great for kids? What's um, also looking? You know, there's that old saying about you never get a second chance to make a first impression. But I'm not so sure that's true these days because people are also making, you're also creating impressions about your brick and mortar from your digital interactions. So your website, your social media accounts, your customer has already begun thinking about, hmm, this is the kind of store that I'm going to go and this is the kind of uh merchandise that I can expect to find. And then finally, and it's the one that everyone goes, oh God, no. <laughs> and that's creativity. And you know, I, I hear so many times it's like, oh, but I'm not an artist. You don't have to be. You just had to be creative and be a problem solver. Now, when I mentioned cleanliness and focus, many times, many of the stores I work with have enormous windows. They've moved into vintage buildings that maybe held, you know, furniture stores. I mean, they have enormous windows. But what if you're carrying handbags? What if you're carrying smaller gifts? You can't pile everything in there. It'll look messy or it'll take merchandise off the shelves or it'll look lost. Just so these were two things that, again, extremely user friendly. The one on the left, it's painted, it's painted inside, on the inside of the glass, at least two coats. I'm gonna tell you this, don't send me a picture where I can see the brush strokes through it. Make sure you've gotten it completely opaque, but you can have taped that in advance. You could completely cover it and scrape away or peel away new stuff, a new area every day to reveal something inside the window think about your window as a giant advent calendar i mean how cool would that be um so i love cheap and cheerful okay i love cheap and cheerful this man oh man will that get you there and this is from abc carpet and home in new york okay this next one is from London and it's unusual to find uh, windows that open from the front, but they are there and drapery, hmm. pull it back, swag it, drop it closed. Do, you can just do so much with fabric or drapes or curtains in that respect. Uh, they've used velvet and fringe. I see some tool um, back there. I also just, for what it's, you know, if it if it matters, I don't know. Um, my background, uh, I was trained as a set designer. And that was, I think, a really great segue into doing windows because the one thing that most windows and most sets share is the proscenium. It is that rectangular opening through which everything is seen. And that uh, one of the first things that theatrical designers will do is shape that frame. They'll say, I'm gonna close it in, I'm gonna make it smaller, I'm gonna make it bigger and full of lights. 
So you can do that too. Um, if there's anything more user-friendly than masking tape and washi tape, I don't know what it is. Um, decals, I would point out that while it either of these devices for creating for for creating a new frame or for adding visual interest without adding a lot of merchandise, you know, if you're trying to shrink it, it's not going to cost anything, but the time spent is your investment with the precision, with the straight lines, with the very intentional placement of things. And this is why just planning it out in advance, maybe doing a sample on a smaller surface, these are things that I recommend. So on the left, that's all that is tape there that they've done. That's not yes. painted. That's all all the that's all that's tape all washi tape. Washi tape. Okay. And it appears wow. to be on the outside. No, that's on the inside of the glass. Yeah. That's on the inside of the that glass. Looks fantastic. Yeah. And, and I've seen it done at Urban Outfitters too. It just looks great. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Makes the building look like a present. <laughs> yeah. And the tape. Those tapes come in all different colors and and widths. Uh, the trick is uh, you want to think about or just consider the you want to burnish it. You know, you can use a burnisher or you can be like me and just pull out an old credit card and rub it down, make sure it's adhered because it is going to be that adhesive side that we're seeing now. It is going to be exposed to sun and heat and cold. Uh, so just to keep that. But it's not going to have a tack level that means you're gonna to have to scrape off a lot of adhesive at the end. So good question. It's very user-friendly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, another thing about editing and curating. One of the reasons, I mean, I love Festive Collective and as one of the first strategies that I mentioned, except for those stuffed bears, maybe, I don't think they're selling anything in this window. Hmm. If, if they were, I think it's really just about come on in and have fun, yeah. have fun with us. One thing they've done and that you mustn't be afraid to do and that you can see we did it on the right-hand side with Uncle Mistletoe or with any windows, it doesn't look like my house where everyone brings something wrapped. You choose four gift wraps that match, period. That's it. <laughs> you wrap them well. You crease the edges. You hide the tape. You buy the ribbons uh, that match. Does that sound picky? Yes, it is. Because you're editing for effect. You're exaggerating for effect. This is why you're making a style statement that people will go, wow. But if I can guarantee you, if that was six different kinds of random gift wrap, it it mm, it just wouldn't grab your eye. It wouldn't it look, look as yeah. cohesive right. and intentional. And that intentionality that's that's a word I use a lot. Just ask my students. They're like, oh, talking about intentionality. But, you know, being deliberate. Okay. Now, the consistency component. Um, what is your vibe? What kind of store, what kind of store are you? What is your holiday mood? As I said, is it playful? Is it woodsy? Is it super contemporary? Is it sparkly? Brush or Christmas greenery is not, is not an absolute. There are as many different interpretations of holiday greenery as there are <laughs> retailers, okay? Um, I, I will tell you that I think if you have a chance to get pre-lit greenery, I would do it. And that way you avoid any of that 
hidden, trying to hide the strands and do all that, because that's a whole other webinar if I were to tell you how how to do the trees the department store way in a star and you know all that um so this this really can make uh life simpler but i wanted to show just a couple of different options there are are two companies that i'm especially aware of and and more and i think if someone has resources that they'd like to share that'd be great um holiday foliage is a vendor uh, that provides just an enormous amount of all different kinds of brush. And this is how we refer to that in the industry, whether it's twigs and be, because also remember, are you looking for pine? Are you looking for cedar? Are you, <laughs> uh, are you looking for a mixture? Because then that mixture adds color and texture and depth. It's more expensive. But if you're looking for lifelike greenery, that will that will boost it. Uh, so here are some pics from Holiday Foliage. Uh, I mean, my goodness, just choose one. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be that green that you're, no. that you're saying, right? You have all the different colors in here. Uh, it's, oh my gosh, you know, and it can be sparkly. It can be, I mean, we know, we know green and we know snow-coated green. Right, we know like frosted, uh, flitter green, but your trees don't have to be your trees don't even have to be the tree lights. They can be cones. They can be uh, empty. You know, there's just a myriad um, of options. And I did see a question come through. Do we have a link? And I think Patrick, there may be some things where you and I can. Just yep. consolidate some information to send to all our attendees. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Bree, we will get that that link to you uh, yeah. about yeah these vendors that that you've mentioned. Uh, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because this, you know, this is this is another thing to think of. Say, if you're working at a community level, do you have special town colors, or is there a special, mm. you know, if if all of the stores are going to be dressed like this, or are you doing outdoor greenery? That's a whole other thing. Um, because the next slide is wondering what consistency, what's on the street, what's on one side of the passerby as they walk, and then your store. Is there is there a way to tie into that? Because I love I love how festive and, and colorful this is. And it has a nice array of um, of kind of non-traditional colors. And so also remember, there's there's red and green, yes. There's blue and white, blue and silver, silver and gold. So it doesn't always have to be uh, the same palette. Now, I, <laughs> oh dear, what happened to my daughter there? I don't know. She's Good turned turn. over on her side. How <laughs> weird. Um, people, I will I will tell you that people say to me like, oh my God, Amy, I bet your house is amazing at holidays. And I'm here to say, oh my God, it is really not. It is cobbler's children go barefoot. Let me tell you. <laughs> I There used to be times when I just wanted to put a sign on the door that said, Merry Christmas. Here's a picture of the tree. All done. Um because there just wasn't a whole lot of energy. But what my daughter is in the process of doing, I apologize about that, is wrapping live greenery around one of these trees on the right that we reproduced in our house. And sometimes we wrap it and or other times I'll hang just a cluster of all different sizes and ornaments and lights that you know, come down thing over here on the left. I believe the, this is also from, um, this is also from holiday foliage, but I want to uh, call out Vickerman and company. They do outstanding products. And in case you didn't know or didn't care, but you should know, we know about trends in fashion. We know they happen, whether we want them to or not. Um, all of these companies follow trends as well. You know, okay. During the headlight moment, 
Yes, creativity. Like, no. <laughs> and I, every now and then someone will say, oh, Amy, don't you wish that someday, don't you hope that someday someone gives you a project with a blank slate and a blank check? And I think, oh, no, 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 no. Because I will run in terror. I am a designer. I solve problems. Give me the problem to fix, not something to create. So don't get so scared. There are so many things that are so user-friendly at Christmas. Um, one, and, and I'm also, well, okay, snowflakes. We know snowflakes. We love snowflakes. Yeah. Kids from the neighborhood can do snowflakes. People in the community can contribute to snowflakes. You can go and look at your snowflakes. And then I want to point out in the middle, this is, this is a window I did for an eyewear store. Those are all eyeglass frame designed snow glass. Uh, oh my gosh. I would, not have, I would not have seen that at first glance. Right? So. Oh. <laughs> if you can't see it, you need glasses, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, love that. Now you're like, well, but I, you know, where would I find a graphic designer? What would I do that? Here's another resource I'm going to throw you uh, that I learned about from Jane Hamill at Fashion Brain Academy. If you haven't used them, check it out, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. And you can find graphic designers. You can find people who can create the files that then can be used to do any kind of laser cutter or anything like this uh, for you. Because this was custom. I worked with a graphic designer, worked with an artist who cre created the file. And then she cut those out of Masonite for me. So, and... We love them. And there's, there's nothing else like it. Um, I so, love the idea of having kids do snowflakes for you, involving the community in that. That I mean, gets some, some cheap labor there. Absolutely. And here are, these are, um, uh, these are some examples of just gorgeous holiday decor that it was at the Eli Lilly uh, mansion if there's anyone on here from uh, the Indianapolis area but think about how folks created all of these rings all of these paper chains all of these gorgeous straw icicles and I want to show you then this is something that anthropology does better than anybody they create community workshops where people, they base, people basically pay for the opportunity to create the props for their windows. I think that's sweet. <laughs> but this is inserting straws into styrofoam balls that will then be used for props in the anthropology windows. I can picture workshops on snowflakes and, you know, take one home, leave one behind. I can picture the things with the icicles or the, or the snowflakes and these straws and why not have fun? And yes, you can, you can have a craft session. You can have an open house workshop. People can come in. And so nothing draws people to a window quite like, look what my kid did yeah, or look what I did. Isn't that awesome? Also seen this done and I've done it as well is um, with embroidery hoops. Again, cheap and cheerful, wrapped in yarn or holding. Uh, you can take a coffee filter uh, and then slice the snowflake out of it. Or yeah, just fun stuff. But you guys want to come and hang out with me, right? You just kind of like, yeah. Sounds I've like you're going to put them to work. I don't know. <laughs> okay. you know? <laughs> well, there is, there is that. Buy me coffee and then we'll talk. Um we were zero waste before anyone had even implemented that plan. I grew up with a mo my mother said, now, Amy, don't you buy a top unless you have, have at least three different bottoms to wear it with. It was that same kind of thing that we would go through. It's like, if I buy this, if I build this, can I repaint it? Can I cut it in half? Can I invert it? 
can I save it and use it again in two years? Mm. And as you are moving from third quarter to fourth quarter or fourth quarter to first quarter, where can you cut yourself some slack? Birch branches, if you're using them, they're good for almost every season. So again, just can you, can you work those in and then maybe they stay and you build up around that for spring or they're in for fall, you remove everything autumnal and then use them as the basis for something holiday. Uh, yeah, love branches because all Christmas decor doesn't always have to be a tree. Remember that um, when I was talking about birch branches, I love manzanita branches. They're wonderful. And they can be sprayed. They can be, they can be painted gold. They can be lit. They can hold things when hung horizontally. They're, they can uh, become almost chandeliers if they're suspended. Great for fall and holiday. Back to zero waste. Okay. I don't think anyone else except those of us who'd earned our scars while dressing trees would look at that picture on the right and realize that that is tons and tons and tons of mismatched greenery. Old trees, old everything, painted within an inch of its life. And it looks fabulous. And this was at Bergdorf Goodman. Oh, wow. And they, they said, you know, if we're going to go red. We're going to go all red. And that's the same kind of thing. It's like, what have you got that's used we had, we had tons and tons of flowers, all mismatched, faded, curled. But you know, you dip them in gesso or you paint them and all of a sudden they become almost sculptural and you don't have to worry about that. So that's another like how they do that. Well, we look for ways to save money <laughs> and then found a way to make that work. Um, Lights, as I said, um, if you can get someone else to do it for you, great. I would tell you that the standard formula we use is 100 lights per one and one half feet. Uh, test them before you start. Keep them plugged in as you work. I wear mine as a necklace. Um, and whatever you do, take off those white cords, those white tags at the, you know, it's like, yeah. do not remove. It's like, but you bought them and you're using them. You can remove that now because they can really, <laughs> they <laughs> really um, interrupt one's view of the tree. Uh, and speaking of the view of the tree, Patrick, you probably had um, maybe had a uh, chicken pot pie under the walnut room uh, in the great, in the walnut room under the great tree. And this is in its 115th year now. And people will say to me like, oh, wow, how that tree, Oh my God, I, you know, my neck hurt from, from looking up. Uh, it draws your eye do up. That? Absolutely, yeah. Well, I'm telling you, it wasn't as tall as you thought. And here's, here is your final trick that I'm going to tell you. Well, no, not the final, but we graduated the size of our ornaments. So we had three sizes of ornaments. Okay. large, small, smaller, that went up the tree. And so we used height and perspective and scale to make it appear even taller. And then finally, yeah, we were doing a shoot with Life magazine and these, these two girls came up. They just were like dressed like that. They weren't hired as models. They just wandered on the street. And the photographer said, would you like to be in the window? They're like, yes. Would you like to be in the picture? Yes. But what I'm pointing out with a very large red arrow is the fact, um, again, how do we do it? Take B lights with white cords, tape them to the floor. Then you cover them with kosher salt. Not, not batting, not, mm -mm, not, um, kosher salt and then because nothing mounds like it it just mounds beautifully and then you sprinkle some iridescent glitter on the top et voila 
you it's have sparkling effect that yep. glitter through the snow. Yeah. Yep. 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 We would have, and the, the, the thing I would uh, ask that you do is just make sure that, because you are probably going to have some cuts on your hands from decorating the trees, maybe just wear gloves when you do the salt. The salt yeah. That, 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 <laughs> you just, that sounds painful. <laughs> you don't need to rub rub salt in the wound any more than you already have so <laughs> well that was fun I it was fun for me I hope you guys got some good uh takeaway tips but just keep it clean show me what to shop show me where to what I need keep it consistent make it make your decor look like you you know you chose this and then be creative, have, have fun, you know, have fun. And remember that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors that goes into this, but there's also a lot of hot glue and masking tape. So don't be afraid. <laughs> it's a little bit of both. You got yeah. Different perceptions, but a lot, a lot of work put into, into that. Well, well cause I, uh, I once got hired to do uh, some museum exhibition work and this guy was just really fed up with all the fabrication and uh, uh, design and fabrication firms, which were fine, you know, fine. He's like, give me that woman from window display. This was the head of Target. He goes, give me that woman from window display. She knows how to do stuff with like cardboard. I'm like, okay, yeah, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but that's theater. Right. And I love that. That's and when you were talking about that, the one window with the drapery, I mean, that does create this like theatrical appearance to it, which I mean, that's uh, beautifully done. And I mean, that's a curtain rod in, in a curtain on it that you, you pull off to the side and you can have your own own theater there to display products in, which is- would You gorgeous. could have your own grand opening, your yeah. unveiling if you wanted to. I think there are a million different ways yeah. to have fun with this. And then the other thing that I would, the other thing that I would do ask is, that you visit your competition, hmm. you see what you like and you make a note of that. Um, and Patrick, when you visit your, your Main Street Mondays, I'm always looking forward to that because I'm like, oh my God, all these stores, you have seen so many gorgeous retailers that I would never have the chance to visit. Yeah. And I hereby invite all of you to please follow me on Windows Matter so that I can follow you because I am always looking for, uh, because I, I write regularly for um, a smart retailer. Mm. We're all, I'm always looking for great examples of merchandising, display, use of color. So, hey, yeah. bring it and let's increase and the bandwidth be featured there. In, and be featured in your article, that, that would be great. Yep. Uh, yeah. We had a question come in. Uh, okay. Diane asks, we have large windows, but no foot traffic by them. Only cars at 30 miles an hour. What size things should we use in our windows? Big things. Big, well-lit mm. things. Uh, and that's, I thank you so much for making that observation. Because when I work with clients, it's like, are you at a stop sign? Are you a stop light? Do you have pedestrian traffic? Is there a huge tree? Is there an awning? Um, it's, it makes a difference. So I get, use that goldfish timer and get something that will uh, do that. It might also be a large graphic on the glass. Wording, something like that. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah. Or like that wreath, that kind of spiral of snowflakes. Uh, and there are artists, who use, uh, who can do just beautiful work with paint markers, um, just great, beautiful stuff like that. And this is, this is another thing uh, in terms of resources and that's, there's nothing quite like Pinterest, hmm. nothing quite like it for finding things and being able to say to a vendor or a designer that you're working with, I'm kind of looking like, like this and that is the modern day version of what we used to have would would be a wall covered with tear sheets which would be someday we're going to do that for a window or this is a great idea and you know it might be up there for two years or something but you're like okay now's the time yeah. now 
I get to use that lumber in that way. And that helps with that creativity. You're not always having to think of things right off the bat. Let's say, oh, I kind of have my whole list here of things I'd like to do out in the future. Um, whenever I get an idea, I'll put them up. Yep, yeah. definitely. We've um, all got full days and lots of work to do. Let's let's make it easier for ourselves. <laughs> and ideas don't always come <laughs> right then. They came yeah. four months ago when you forgot about them. Oh. Rosie asks, my store is located inside a shared marketplace. I do okay. not have a window, but I do have a five foot tall wall that I can utilize as a backdrop. How do you recommend I dress the wall? Okay, paint. Well, can you paint? You know, I don't know if you can paint it. I would say that uh, making a big color splash or covering it with panels of fabric. Um, those are going to be your two most um, most affordable and forgivable uh, uh, things. Anything that you can do in repetition um, and exaggerating for a repetition is good. And anything that you might use 10 of, use 20 of. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and that's something people are like, mm, I don't know. No, go big. Go big or go home. That's kind of how you want to do that. If you want to send me a picture, happy to look at it and, and make a recommendation. Um, because, and, and if you did have one of the things that uh, I find with retailers that I work with, they do have a window, but they don't have a wall. And so how are you stopping the customer's eye from just doing, you know, and then just going everywhere? Right into the store. And sometimes right that's, you know, positioning a screen or dropping fabric or doing something like that. Excellent. Um, I love it. People are asking questions. Robin asks, uh, do you have a rec do you have recommendations for creating a good focal display at an entrance, props, height, et cetera? Eye level. It's got to be at eye level. Uh, I need you to think about if you're, um, tr um, if you are, I mean, because I'm, I'm a fan of a feature table there at the entrance and that what we call the decompression zone when you, and then like, oh, okay, which way am I going to go? Oh, but five here's feet what, or so, right? You know, here's what's yeah, new. Um, I'm always, I'm always hedging my bets on strollers because they've got to navigate that. So just whatever you make sure, make sure you've got plenty of room around it. Um, the other thing would be is if, if floor space is tight, look up, you might be able to suspend something. I've seen uh, like uh, ladders that are suspended horizontally uh, that have, you know, holly and lights and things like that coming from them that people can walk in and look up mm. but you still have floor space beneath you want some breathing room yeah excellent does that make sense okay yeah yeah i mean yeah okay. <laughs> eye level have something there but you get yeah i've seen a lot of people do great things you know a ladder hanging from the ceiling you can have things coming down from that something else kind of at ceiling height create some more room for yourself there too yep um, see another question from Patty. Uh, my windows have product on them to prevent the sun from fading products. So oh. they have a dark tint on them, making it hard to see. And uh, I have them lit from the floor and the top, and I always use brighter colors or white products. Oh. But what else do you suggest? I'm in okay. a downtown area and I'm a clothing and gift store. I rent so I cannot remove the claim. Darn it. Darn that tent. <laughs> and and Patrick, I think this is one of the questions you gave yes, to me. Yes, yeah. Earlier. Some people emailed and questions I ahead of time. I reached out so. to my store lighting experts. Well, not mine, their their own. And this is another link that we should provide so that uh your uh folks here know about them, and that's front door back. And that they are retail designers. And so Seanette Corkill and Anne-Marie Luthro, I'm like, okay, ladies, I this is not my area of expertise. And the first thing was, can she get the film off her glass? No. Um, 
But if you can talk to your landlord, just a just a thing, there are newer films that block 99% of the UV light um, and folks can see in much more easily. So I'm not sure what the reasoning was uh, for that. You, you do have to almost double the amount of dedicated spotlighting on your window displays. You do. Um, the, you need to stay with higher value uh, colors and tints. So whites, creams, things that will show through, have a higher contrast. Um, and it's, so <laughs> got a lot of snow and snowflakes in there. Uh, things that are, are yeah, white, white and trees, sparkly yeah. because uh, red and green. And I know a lot of people like to use like black on their windows, black lettering and stuff, not going to show up, tint or not. It's just not going to. So um, think about that. But um, let's see. At, hi, Amy. Advice on tinted windows. Never have tinted windows. Okay, well... <laughs> Well, yeah, front door back. I that's know. uh <laughs> but in a perfect world, then she goes on to say you would you gotta double down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or sweet talk, sweet talk that building owner and say, you know, it doesn't have to be this. And if dark. there's a new type, maybe yeah, you can look at that and say, Hey, you know, this is detrimental actually to our business. If we could put this different type of a film on here, tint on here that does the same thing, but it's not going to cause that issue. Um um, the, the newer films that are out there have about as much darkening as a current windshield would. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we don't, we don't have to look to, we see outside, but it blocks the UV light. Brie comes kind of from the opposite side. She says, <laughs> I don't have tint, but we do have a problem with awful fading of stuff that gets put in the window. Right. How do you deal with that? with the tint that you just mentioned? You have to think, it is, are, are these like leather goods, clothing? I, you know, I don't know. We would, uh, a lot of times we had to be prepared, children's clothing and game. Okay, it's gonna fade. Um, so if you're in a really sunny area, right? I mean, unless you're in, but, Fading and evaporation and melting and all those are par for the, we would, we would have to pay for shoes that got faded or creased when they were on mannequins. Um, we would have to refill flower arrangements every day, uh, refill cups of coffee or fake wine. We would have to use uh, bottles of perfume filled with just colored water so that the alcohol content for that and or wine and champagne uh, didn't think if candles, if we really felt strongly that we needed the candles, then we had to get a lot of candles because they would melt and we'd have to replace it. So if there's, um, it's, I'm, I, I hate to say, but it is at, on some level, the cost of putting your stuff on display. What you don't want to do is have it in there faded, because right. then, then, then it creates a a, a, a negative Im impression that it's just been left in there too long. Um, I kind of had a question based on that. How often should you be changing your windows? Is it seasonally? Uh -huh. Is it with different holidays? Um, I'm in a, guessing in that a you're per, not leaving them in there too long. In a perfect world, I would say once a month. Once a month, okay. Um, that's pretty ambitious for many yeah. retailers given staff sizes. But the, you know, in January when you're like looking at that clearance and you're wondering, <laughs> can can I move on? Sit down with a calendar, um, and just pencil in some dates or some rotation goals. And there are also things that we know, February 15th, March 18th, July 5th, they don't move. So no reason to act surprised when it's like, oh, you know, 
Uh, Easter, yes, that catches people by surprise sometimes, but plan ahead. And then uh, it's just one less like, oh, I need to do that today or tomorrow. Um, the, the more planning you can do, then the more shopping you can do for something that you see uh, or maybe hold on to something, beg, borrow, steal, Facebook marketplace is awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I see so much stuff on there. Um, so that in a, a month, but no more than six, six to six weeks. After six weeks, things just start to be wallpaper. Especially if you're like on a pedestrian commuter path. Yeah. You really need to kind of mix it up. Good. All right. Thank you. Get for attention. That. Okay. Um, let's see. I didn't have another question. I know there's a lot of community organizations, Main Street organizations that, that are on here today. Um, mm. Do you have recommendations for something a community can do together? I lived in a community when I was younger that uh, they had a children, artist, middle school, high school would submit a display. They painted the windows like that, which was great, mm -hmm. brought people into downtown, but it also covered up product in the windows and so you couldn't really see inside the stores uh, what would be some recommendations you would have for something communities could do to kind of have a consistent thing that brings people into the downtown well and i've had some uh I've, i think it was naperville several years ago where it was you 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 like follow to find this teddy bear okay it's kind of like you know but uh and then you could get your 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 card punched at that store and then you know you could do the so kind of like where's waldo but not but yeah. this was their distinctive customized teddy bear for christmas in naperville um so that i think this is another great thing about snowflakes <laughs> is they're easy to make an ad to a tree or or have a chance to uh I, I think anytime you can do kind of a, like an I spy or can you find, or do you want to add to, uh, is, is really fun. Yeah. Um, I, and you know, we do advent calendars now for candy. So I think we've kind of walked away from anything, uh, terribly faith-based about it. It's just a countdown calendar. And so do different stores reveal oh, different things yeah. at different days. Yeah, you have like a 25-day um, countdown. You get 25 stores involved. Everyone's yeah, got a different day yeah. or something. Yeah. And maybe everyone just has a cigar box wrapped or decorate, you know, something. And then on that day, you can go there and see what, what that is. So, oh, or, you know, yeah. collect what was in there. I think, I think there's some really fun things. I know... Uh, I am, I am a member of our Six Corners Association here in Chicago, and they have a trolley tour that's, you know, great fun uh, to be able to visit uh, the different things. And again, kids, man, you get those kids inside the store, then of course... <laughs> You can and then, you can yeah, get, get, they're, they're spending mom and dad's money already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you can participate in decorating the store or the store can help you take something back to your home for decoration or, Very fun. you know, pom poms to put on your hat or different things like that. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I haven't had any other questions come in okay. yet. So um, okay. <laughs> I mean, no, thank you all for asking questions and being attentive and uh, being involved today. Thank you so much. Amy, thank you so much for, for being on today. Uh, again, I am very thrilled to be able to learn from you and um, yeah, help out retailers, you know, get their, get their window displays ready for the holidays. Some great tips in here. So thank you very, very much for being on today. My pleasure. And I hope everyone's walking away from here with some, some wheels spinning. Absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's something I can do. Okay, here's now. Get All myself right, ready. Let's get going. <laughs> yes. uh, and again, if you need to rewatch, you will receive a recording of this. So uh, you can go back and, and rewatch until your heart is content. So. <laughs> Um, just a plug up for our next webinar. It will be the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. So November 29th, um, we will be talking about 
creating a brand for your store and creating consistent branding for your store. So having it on your website, having it in your business cards, having it um, on your store displays and your signs, making sure that you have that consistent branding. So uh, Kayla Peepcow, of, the founder of Docs Designs, will be speaking with us. Again, that is Wednesday, November 29th. So uh, again, Amy, thank you so much for being on today. <laughs> Everyone will be receiving a recording of this later today. So again, thank you all very much. Um, and if you would like to register for any upcoming webinars, we have them on our website, heartonmainstreet.org. And you can visit Amy at, uh, you want to tell them where they can find you or how they can contact you? Yes, at Windows Matter. Uh, and that, at Windows Matter on Instagram, Windows Matter on Facebook. Um, and www. Wait for it. Windows Matter. Oh, oh, I know. There you whoa. go. Consistency. What are they about consistency. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, come find me. Look at the work I've done in the past. Ask questions. Invite me to your town. I'm here for you. Excellent. Well, thank you okay. very much, and everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.